<laughs> hey, Tammy, thank you. everyone. I certainly hope that one works. <laughs> Welcome back. We are going to try round two of our Wednesday morning live stream. So good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, looks like, yay, you can hear us. Okay. Apologies. It's, I think it's mostly our equipment. It's just getting so old that sometimes it can't handle all the software. <laughs> but we're here. We made it. So um, today we are going to make a Fair Isle style dishcloth using our evergreen tree pattern. Uh, this is a one of our Fair Isle style plus patterns. It's available in our shop. That pattern also includes the Christmas tree version of this, but I love evergreen trees because they kind of have a Christmassy feel. I'm going to use some Christmassy colored yarn today, but if you just kind of want that natural look, just that tree image, you can make it just in green and white or green and blue, whatever kind of colors you want that suits your decor. And it's one of those sort of images that can really just go all year round. It's got that nice sort of rustic, cozy feeling. Um, so if you know people who like that look, then this might be a really nice little gift to make and tuck into the stash for later. So we are going to use the Fair Isle style tree pattern. Um, we put together a, a graph image to sit up on the screen today. So we're gonna hope that that works. Once again, it's that whole Let's hope the software and the computer hardware don't mess up. <laughs> so we're gonna leave the graph up there for you so you guys can work along with me. I'm gonna be calling out the counts. Obviously, you're gonna see me doing it in real time. So I don't think anybody should get lost, but I'm gonna guess that some of you move a lot faster than me and some of you may, may move a little slower than me. So we're gonna keep the graph up there so you can see it just like we would in a regular Fair Isle style. Uh, tutorial. So let's talk about what I'm using today. Uh, normally I use a five and a half millimeter hook. This is an I or a nine. And this is the hook I've been using for the entire calendar blanket. But since I'm making a dishcloth, um, I was just kind of experimenting with my yarns before we got going here. And I'm thinking I might just go down a half a hook size. This isn't important. Um, but I think just making my stitches a little bit tighter than they normally are um, because I'm using a, a, this cotton yarn might be a good choice for me. I'm going to leave that up to you. So if you want to use a five millimeter, a five and a half millimeter, a four and a half millimeter, that's anywhere between um, an H, uh, a seven, maybe even a G6 now, maybe a seven, an H and, a, and an I. Those are sort of the best hook sizes, I would say. For this project, I'm using a size for medium weight cotton yarn. So for dishcloths, you want to use cotton yarn. This is 100% cotton. It's that Handicrafter by Burnett. Um, I think the same stuff is also marketed in the States under the peaches and cream or the sugar and cream uh, name. So it's just a nice uh, hard wearing uh, cotton yarn. It's nothing fancy, but it really works well as a dishcloth. You can throw it in the washing machine and it, it holds up for quite a while. So I'm going to use my slightly smaller hook today. That's my H hook. Um, pair of scissors, yarn needle. You might need a stitch marker. I don't know. It's good to have one on hand. And I'll just be measuring my dishcloth when I'm done. So that's all of the stuff that I'm going to be using today. I'm just going to put my little tree off to the side here. And welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I think in the last stream, Nico may have gifted a membership if I'm Keep keeping track of things. Thank you, Nico, so much. <laughs> the live stream that didn't happen like 10 minutes ago. And um, I, I did see Destiny. I think Destiny won it. So congratulations, Destiny. And thank you so much, Nico. And I'm so glad you guys were all able to find us again. Um, once again, technical difficulties. I'm guessing that is partially due to our aging, aging computer. <laughs> we are working on saving up for a new one. So uh, hopefully... Next spring, maybe early summer, we'll be able to, to have a whole new computer. We shall see. So let's get started. I'm going to use white for my background. I'm going to use this nice bright green for my tree. And then I'm going to put a little red uh, around the edge in a border. That's going to be my color scheme because I'm going to go kind of Christmassy with this. But like I said, if you want to go 
uh, just to match the theme or the color of the kitchen you're making it for, then you want to grab those colors. So I'm going to start with my white. I don't need my red just yet, and I've got my green handy. I will not be using a spool today. I do not need to use a spool because I am just working the one little sampler size of this square. So I'm going to get my yarn ready to go. I don't quite need my green just yet, but I may as well get it ready. So I'm going to put that to side. Okay, so here we go. We are going to take our A color. This is the background color. I'm using white in this case. We're going to start with a slip knot and we're going to chain 21 to begin. 21 is the base foundation chain for any of the Fair Isle samplers we made this year. So any of the Fair Isle style graphs that we created in 2023, the 12 for the blanket, and I think there's another 35 or 36 of them in the shop and a couple of free ones on our website too. They all operate off the same thing. So 21 foundation chains if you're just making one repeat of it. There we go. 21 chains. We also had a pattern purchase while we were glitching out. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, Tammy. Thank you, Tammy, <laughs> while we were glitching out. <laughs> we had a pattern purchase. Thank you for the reminder, Mr. and Stitches. Um, oh, yes. And um, this is today's sneaky sale. So if you haven't picked up um, this particular Fair Isle Style Plus pattern and you're interested in it, it is up top in the shop. Once you've got 21 chains in your foundation chain row, we are going to skip the first two chains. We're going to find the third and double crochet into it. Then you're going to double crochet in each of the remaining chains, and that will give us 20 double crochet stitches because in the case of this particular pattern, we count the chain two. That's the chain two you skipped. It becomes your turning chain. It's going to count as a double crochet. So you count that as a stitch. And the entire graph is based on 20 stitches all the way across. And we chain two and turn at the end of every row. That chain two always counts as the first double crochet of the new row. So 20 stitches in each row, 11 rows in the entire sampler, and then we're going to add a little border to it. So I've just downsized a half hook size for the purpose of today's sampler that I'm turning into a dishcloth. Um, this particular size for cotton yarn is just a little on the thinner side than the typical size for acrylic yarn that I use in the tutorials uh, for the rest of the blanket. So that's why I've just gone down a half a hook size because I just want I want some sudsing capability. That's another reason I like to use slightly taller stitches in a dishcloth. It, the suds kind of work through the stitches as you're, you're working. So I, I want it to be kind of tight, but not too tight. Um, so I've gone down a half a hook size. I feel like I like that. Um, that is row one, 20 stitches all the way across. As you look at our graph, row one of the graph is the bottom row. We are building this. If you've never done a Fair Isle a graph with us before, we do the rows from the bottom up. So this is row one, and then row two, row three, row four, etc. If you're right-handed, you start on the graph over here. If you're left-handed, you would start over here. But our tree is a perfect mirror image, so it really doesn't matter today what side of the graph you start on. You're going to get the exact same effect. Uh, we chain two and turn for every single um, every single row. So as you're chaining in two and turning, this is why it matters if you're working right-handed or left-handed, if the graph you're using isn't perfectly symmetrical. But this one is, so you don't have to worry so much about it. So row one was just double crochet all the way across using A. For row two, we are going to start bringing in our new B color. So we're just going to use B for two stitches in the very middle. The first nine stitches of the, of the row are in A, then two in B, and then nine in A again. So nine A, two B, nine A. That's all we've got to do. So chain two, turn the chain two counts as the first double crochet of the row. 
and then I'm going to double crochet into each of the next eight stitches. Big thank you to Heather for gifting a membership. Thank you, Heather. And the winner is Melissa. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Heather, and welcome, Melissa. Congratulations. So let's see here, including my chain two, I've got eight stitches so far. I'm starting the ninth stitch and now I'm bringing in my new color. So before I finish that double crochet, I'm going to get my color B, which is going to be my green for the tree. I'm going to start with a slip knot. And I'm going to put that on my hook, make sure it's not too loose or too tight. And I'm going to finish off that double crochet with the new color. I'm going to keep my tails to the front and I'll weave them in later. Now I'm going to carry my A color and I'm going to work two double crochets with my B. And because I'm only working two double crochet with the B, I'm going to finish off that second double crochet with A again. So I'm going to bring my B to the front. I'm dropping the B. I don't need it for the rest. I'm just going to leave it right where it is. I'm going to finish off that stitch with my A. And then the rest of the row is just double crochets in A. So nine stitches to go using A. And the B color can just sit right where I dropped it and I'll pick it up to use it for row three. The last double crochet, so you'll have eight here of the regular double crochet, the last stitch of the row is always worked into the top of the chain two. So don't miss the top of the chain two. Remember the chain two does count as a double crochet, so you treat it like a double crochet when you get to the end of the row. So that's row two. We've started our tree using the B color in the middle of our graph. And now we're moving on to row three. If you look at the little graph at the top right hand corner of the screen, we're on to row three. Right handed you would be here normally, left handed you would be here, but it doesn't matter because this is mirror image. We've got 2A, 16B, 2A. So that's it, it's a mostly B row. So we chain two with A and turn, that counts as the first double crochet of the row. I'm just gonna move my B color to the back. second stitch is started with A, but I'm going to finish it with B. So I'm going to bring my B all the way from where it was dropped over here and finish off that stitch. I am not going to pull very tightly because I don't want to cinch my dishcloth together. And now I'm going to work 16 double crochet with B. And I'm working over top of not only my A carried color, but that little reach of the B, I want to work right over top of it and that will just help everything blend in nice and neat and tidy. So I'm always making sure that when I'm working that double crochet stitch, I'm getting over top of both the carried A color and that little reach of B. So this is the bottom of the tree. This is the biggest part of the tree. I like to slow down a little bit when I'm using cotton yarn, especially this dishcloth style cotton yarn, because it's not very tightly wound and it's really easy to kind of split the, the yarn ply while you're working. So I just sort of slow down a little bit. Halfway through that, I'm just gonna pause and just tug gently on my A color just to make sure that it's not bunching up underneath. 
I have completely covered that little carry, that little reach of the B color that where I dropped it here and needed to pick it up there. It's completely carried and covered. And I'm just going to continue the rest of those double crochet in B. Uh, for total yarn amounts, I probably should have just mentioned that. Um, it's your typical dishcloth. You're going to want around 20 yards, 20 to 25 yards of your A color, and maybe 10 to 12 yards of your B color, and another six to eight yards of your border color if you're making it a different color like I am. So that's stitch number 16 with the green. Before I finish that stitch with A to change colors again, I'm just going to just tug gently on A to make sure that nothing's poking out back here. I'm going to drop B, finish that last stitch with A, and then I'm going to double crochet in the last two stitches. So 2A, 16B, 2A, repeat. Marie, thank you so much for picking up a pattern. And that is row three complete. So we've got the bottom of a tree started. There's our little trunk. There's the first row of the tree. That's this row here. It's the biggest part of the tree. And then from here on out, we basically get smaller and smaller and smaller. We use less and less B throughout each of the successive rows. So we're on to row four if you're looking at the graph. Row four begins with four in A. Then we go to uh, 12 in B and then 4 in A to finish. So 4A, 12B, 4A. And that is row 4, chain 2 turn with color A. That counts as the first double crochet. I'm going to move my B color back to the front. Give myself a little slack. I'm going to work the next stitch in A, and then I've got two more to do in A, but here's my B where I dropped it, so I want to pick up B and work over top of it. I want to carry that B color, so I'm just going to make sure that it's sitting on top of my hook when I work the next two double crochets using A. And I'm going to just pause before I finish that fourth stitch. So. I've picked up B, I've worked over top of it so that it's where I need it to be when I start working with it again, and it's not going to cross over top of any of my existing stitches. I'm going to finish that stitch with B, so I'm changing back to color B now. I'm going to carry the A color, and I'm going to work 12 double crochet using B. And I am so happy that so many of you could join us today. I, uh, I love making dishcloths. I know you guys hear me say that like all the time, but I especially love making dishcloths at this time of year because again, it's a way to bring a little bit of festive theming into the kitchen without actually adding in decorations that take away space from things you already need. Like you need to have a dishcloth in the, in the, like in the kitchen. So you may as well make one that sort of is on theme and you don't have to put something put something in the way just to sort of decorate by taking away space from other things you need especially if you have a smaller kitchen I don't have a gigantic kitchen so I still like to decorate it but I like it to be decorated with things that I'm using okay that's the 12th double crochet of B I'm going to just drop my B color Hold on to my last A stitch and just make sure by tugging gently that I don't have any A poking out behind. So I'm going to bring B to the front. I'm going to finish that stitch with A and I've got four more double crochet using A to finish off this row. I have just enjoyed this year's calendar blanket so much. I've really had fun making all of these graphs. Marilyn, speaking of amazing calendar blankets, we've been sharing Marilyn's progress all year long. She's the one doing the black backed uh, background of her uh, calendar blanket. So it's all the colors are red and gold and blue 
and green on black. It's such a striking calendar blanket. Marilyn's been a member for 47 months. Thank you, Marilyn. Marilyn says, that dishcloth is going to be so cute. I love all these live streams and of course, all the amazing calendar blanket patterns, including all the extra plus patterns. Thank you, Marilyn. Yes, her blanket is amazing. I absolutely love it. And I know a lot of you do too, because every time we show it off, people go, whoa, that one's so striking. <laughs> That is row four complete. So one, two, three, four. We've just finished uh, the second row of the bottom part of our tree. We're moving into row five now. Row five is five in A, 10 in B, five in A. So if you're looking at the little chart, row five, five A to start, 10 B, five A to finish. Remember that the chain two done in color A counts the first double crochet of the next row. So we're gonna chain two, turn. I'm gonna move my B color to the other side of my little dishcloth here. So that's stitch number one, the chain two. I'm gonna double crochet four more times. Nico. <laughs> thank you, Nico. Nico with another sneaky gifted membership. And family friendly create, or family crochet creations. That's so sweet, has won it. Congratulations, welcome back. I'm working a fifth stitch in color A, which happens to be on top of a color B from the previous row, and that's where I dropped my B yarn. So I wanna make sure that when I start that stitch, I carry the B. So I'm just working over top of it, just for that one stitch, because I'm actually gonna finish this stitch with B, and that stops that B color from crossing over top of the other colored stitch. So I'm gonna finish that stitch with B. So 5A to start. I'm gonna do 10B now, working over top of color A, and then I'm gonna finish the row with five in A. 5A, 10B, 5A. Lala, hi Lala. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you could make it today. Lala says, she's lurking at work. Wanted to say hello. Loves the Stitches fam, us too. Thank you so much, Lala. We love our lurkers. <laughs> All right, that's my 10th stitch. And before I finish it with A, because I'm changing colors, I'm just gonna pull on A to make sure that nothing is gaping at the back, and it's not. And I'm gonna drop B. I'm gonna finish this stitch with A. And then it's 5A to finish this row. I'm just dropping B where I last used it. And happy birthday to Regina. Happy birthday, was, Regina. Birthday was yesterday. I've got 5A to finish the row. The last stitch is always worked into the top of the chain too. So 5A, 10B, 5A. That was row five. We're going into row six. It's the very middle of our graph. So we're halfway done here after this row. We've got seven stitches in A, and then six stitches in B, and then seven stitches in A to finish the row. So 7A, 6B, 7A, and that finishes row six. So chain two turn, counts as the first stitch of the row. I'm gonna move my B back to the front of my work. And Victoria's wondering, where do we purchase all our yarn? I kind of get it from everywhere, Victoria. Um, I like to typically buy my yarn in person, uh, especially if it's a yarn I've never used before, because I like to feel it, I like to smell it, I like to touch it, I like to see the real color. And then once I'm familiar with a yarn, I might order it online. Um, so I buy a lot of yarn at, um, if I can't find what I'm looking for at like an independent, then we have a Michaels that we go to. Um, I like to purchase from Lens Mills. I've purchased from them in house and I've purchased from them online. I've bought yarn at Mary Maxim, uh, at the Mary Maxim at location in Paris, Ontario. Um, I haven't ordered anything from them directly online yet, but I will be. <laughs> 
Um, so I really like Mary Maxim um, for shopping in person. That's a really fun store. If you're ever in Paris, Ontario, I highly recommend visiting uh, the Mary Maxim store. Um, Walmart, if Walmart has what I need. We don't have a lot of craft store options in Canada. Um, so I have bought yarn from Amazon before, but to be perfectly honest, everyone, I don't know what it's like in US Amazon. I find Canadian Amazon yarn prices have really not, they're not good anymore. They're just, they're just not great. We used to be able to get some really great like add-on deals with yarn, but no one's really making great yarn sales or there's not really any yarn deals on Amazon, at least not that I've seen lately. Um, so I buy it in person if I can. And uh, recently I've been buying a lot from Lens Mill. I've got to carry my green B color for a couple of stitches before I'm ready to use it again. So I just work over top of it and carry it until I get to where I need it. So I am seven stitches in. Before I finish that seventh stitch, I'm going to pick up my B yarn. I carried it, so now it's ready for me to use where I need it. And you can see I've picked it up. It's not crossing over top of those stitches, so it's nice and neat. Now I'm working over top of my A color and I'm working for six stitches in B. Yeah, so a lot of you are seeing that Amazon yarns become really expensive too. It is, it's ridiculous. And if you know the price of a ball of yarn, especially if it's kind of yarn that you buy regularly, um, it's always a helpful thing to know, kind of price compare if you're doing any kind of shopping. Um, it's, I don't find any deals there anymore. So I haven't bought yarn from Amazon in quite a while. That's six in B. Finish that last stitch with A, dropping the B, and the rest of the stitches in this row, and there are seven of them, are all in A. <laughs> no, you're not the only one who has the smell of the yarn, Victoria. I actually, um, I like the touch test, not only because I want to smell it, but um, if some, not all yarns are created equal, like some yarns are much softer than others. Some yarns are kind of scratchy. Some yarns are um, possibly allergen inducing. Like if they're too fluffy, I don't want to deal with yarn that's too fluffy because it'll make me sneeze. Um, some yarns, you know, if you're buying yarn to make a project for someone else, you might want to feel the yarn because you don't want to, you know, choose a yarn that isn't comfortable or isn't soft or might be an allergenic yarn. Like if, if they've got a problem with wool, even some, some wool blends don't set everybody off, but some do. So it's just good to feel the yarn. I like to do that. Stitch number seven is in the top of the chain too. So we are done row six, row seven now. We are all the way up here. So we're making our tree a little wider again for the sort of the top part. Um, row seven on the graph up in the top right hand corner is five in A, 10 in B, five in A. So it is a repeat of uh, row five, 5A, 10B, 5A. So I'm starting my fifth stitch with A. I'm gonna move my B to the back of my, there we go. I dropped it at the back, so it's gotta stay at the back. Now I've got to pick it up and I've got to reach. So I'm going to grab my B yarn. I'm going to finish off that stitch with it. And I'm not pulling too tightly. I'm giving it a little bit of slack so that I can work over top of it. So now I'm working 10 double crochets, working over top of both my carried A color and that little reach of B color. Not a lot to work over top of, but I'm making sure I catch it with each stitch just so it doesn't cross over top of my other stitches and show. And I'm carrying A for 10 stitches. And that's stitch number 10. Before I finish it, I'm gonna put it down. I'm gonna hold that last A stitch and just pull gently on the A so that I know I don't have anything kind of bulging, bulging out the back. So just to make sure it looks nice and neat and tidy. Drop B, switch back to A. 
And I always sort of tighten that last color change a little bit too. And then it's five in A to finish the row. Super chat from Billy Joe. Billy Joe! Hi, Billy Joe. Thank you so much. Billy Joe says, this is awesome. One, I will buy patterns can... Mm -mm -mm. This is awesome. One, I will be buying patterns... Cans? My daughter wants a Christmas... Oh, because my my daughter wants a Christmas blanket. She wants gnomes, but she will be happy with anything. Ah, gnomes. Gee, I should try and do a gnome graph. That would be super cute. I love gnomes too. They're just so darling. All right, that was five in A to finish the row. We are now up to... That was row seven. We are starting into row eight. So we are... Closing in the top of the tree now. For row eight, we are back to seven in A, six in B, seven in A repeat. So row um, eight is a repeat of row seven. So chain two, turn with the A. I'm gonna bring my B back to the front. I've got to work over top of two B colored stitches from the previous row. So I've got to make sure that when I make that next stitch, I'm catching the B working yarn so I can work over top of it. There we go. I'll just tug on that. Finish that stitch with B. And now it's six in B. And I'm going to carry A. This is a really good little, um, if you're getting used to Fair Isle, maybe you haven't done the project along with us this uh, year, or you were sort of waiting in the wings to see how it worked out, or you're gathering your courage to try graphs. Um, this one is a nice one to work with because this graph is mirror image, so you don't really have to worry about losing track of, of what side you're on when you're working it. It's a really simple and cute image. It's a very recognizable image, and it's a classic Fair Isle style image. This little tree pattern shows up in Fair Isle uh, knitting all the time. That's it for the B. I'm going to finish that last stitch with, maybe just tug on that a little bit, finish that last stitch with A, drop B right where it is, and finish the row with seven double crochet in A. Uh, if you're just joining us, I am using a size 4 medium weight cotton, 100% cotton yarn, because I'm making a dishcloth. We are using the graph that we've got up there on the top right hand corner. It is this little guy here, our little Fair Isle style evergreen tree pattern. I'm using a 5 millimeter hook, it's also known as an H, but you can really choose whatever medium sized hook you feel goes best with your yarn, uh, because all yarn weights are a little bit different. And we've just finished, what was this? Finished row eight. So now we're turning into row nine. We're gonna chain two and turn. Move my B color to the back again. Row nine. So we are three away from the top. Here's row nine. We are going to work eight double crochet in A, four in B, eight in A, and that is row nine. So that train two at the beginning counts as a double crochet. We need eight in the A color before we pick up B again, which means we'll be sort of crocheting over top of some existing B stitches. So we have to carry that little B color for a while, just one stitch. So this is the stitch I'm doing. I'm gonna pick up my B and just lay it over top of my hook so that I carry it. I'm working over top of it, and before I finish that stitch, I'm going to switch back to B, and then four double crochet in B, I'm carrying A, tighten up on A, switch back to A, drop the B. So that's four in B. Don't need B any longer. I can just double crochet in A to the end of the row.
So 8 in A, 4 in B, 8 in A. That finishes row 9. We've got two more rows of the graph left to go. Chain 2 and turn with color A. I'm going to move my B back to the front. This is row 10 up here. If you're looking up at the top at the graph, row 10 is an exact repeat of row 2. It's 9A, 2B, 9A. So that first chain 2 counts as a double crochet. Now my ninth stitch is going to be worked over top of a green stitch. So I'm going to make sure I get my hook underneath that working yarn before I insert it into that stitch so I can work over top of it because I want to carry it. I don't want that little green line over top of my white stitch. Change to B. Just two stitches with B and then I can drop B again and that's it with B. B is finished. Rest of this row is all color A. So nine stitches in A. And then we chain two, turn, and we do one full row in color A to finish off the graph. So row 11 is just like row one. It's just solid double crochets all in A color. So you're done with your B. Now because this is a dishcloth and it's intending to get some pretty heavy use, I'm gonna make sure that I cut a slightly longer tail on my B, which I might just do now before I finish my 11th row. So I'm going to cut uh, a few inches of the B so that I can weave it in back and forth a few times and it won't want to come out on me uh, while I'm using it. Row 11 of the graph, chain 2, turn, double crochet in every single stitch across. You'll still have 20 stitches, every row is 20 stitches, and it's all in color A. Last double crochet of the row is worked into the top of the chain two. And that is it for the graph. I will be changing colors for my border. If you don't want to change colors for your border, don't fasten off. But if you do, like me, you can go ahead, snip your yarn, fasten off. I'm going to take a moment now to weave in all my tails before I do my border. So I've got all of my tails on this side. I'm going to start first with the bottom one. And I'm going to go through just a few of these stitches. I find this cotton to be a little on the grabby side, so it doesn't typically want to come undone uh, or work its way out. But when you're, you know, really putting a dishcloth through its paces, uh, it does, you know, the stitches can loosen up a little bit. So uh, weaving the tail in back and forth underneath some stitches does help keep it in place. And if you are concerned at all about any of your um, stitches coming or any of your little tails weaving themselves, uh, unweaving themselves, I suppose, uh, because maybe you're giving this as a gift or something, then cut your tails or leave longer tails for yourself while you're crocheting, uh, just so you have more tail to weave back and forth. Because the more you weave those tails in and out and in and out, back and forth across those rows, the less they will come undone. So that's why. I'm not knotting off up here. You don't really have to do that. So I want to make sure that I've got a lot of tail left so that I can weave it in back and forth, back and forth. I'm going to go sort of sneak down to a couple of the rows below. And I just do that by running the yarn underneath 
loops of the stitches back here. So you don't really see this. And I run it through loops that are close together so that you don't see like the, the long length of the tail um, passing over top of stitches. Like you don't want that to be obvious. And I'm always making sure that I'm not pulling too tightly because I don't want to pull the image out of alignment. And I'm gonna go back and forth through here a couple times. Oops. Wants to unwind. Stay in there. There we go. Okay. And then I'm gonna come down under these loops. back and forth through here. And that'll probably about do it for this tail. There we go. All right, so that's the green tails all woven in. And now let's do, this looks nice. Do the white one up here. So I like to come down the side through one loop along the edge and then weave it in back and forth underneath those double crochet stitches. And turn around and go back. One more. There we go. All right, all ends woven in. So Looks nice and neat and tidy, looks the same on the front as it does on the back. Another reason I really like these graphs. Let's put on a border. So I'm going to switch now to red because I really do want this to look festive. Um, but if you you know didn't want it to look uh, overly Christmassy, you could certainly go with a more muted green, like this is a nice sage green color and just uh, you know do it in the colors of your kitchen. I like that kind of I'll probably make a few more of these for myself, but in just sort of more standard evergreen colors just for use throughout the year, because I really like that kind of rustic look. I'm gonna start with a slip knot on my hook. Maybe I'll leave myself a little bit of extra tail just for weaving in. There we go. And I'm gonna start, let's see. I'm gonna turn it so that this was my last double crochet at the end of row 11. So I'm going to turn my work as though I was going to work back across. So I'm going to put my hook in underneath that last double crochet. I'm going to join with a slip stitch and chain two. So that's going to count as the first double crochet of my row. And then I'm going to double crochet all the way across. So I'm going to use double crochet for my border. Easy peasy, nice and simple. And it's going to be a nice wide strip of that red color. Plus it'll make my dishcloth just a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna double crochet in each stitch all the way across. I'm gonna work over top of my short tail because why not? And I will have 20 stitches to start the border worked across the top of the dishcloth.
don't forget when you get to the end that chain two got to make sure you put a double crochet in the top of that so where are we at we've just started the border that's 20 double crochet all the way across to start in red and now we're going to turn a corner so we're going to chain two and it's really easy to see because I'm using the bright red color we're going to switch uh, sort of rotate our square so that we're working down the side of it we're going to skip this edge of the border row so we don't want to do that what we want is the first row of the graph or this is row 11 of the graph so the last row I should say of our graph and we're going to work two double crochet around the edge stitch of that row and then do the same thing all the way down two double crochet around the edge stitch of each of those 11 rows all the way down so you'll have 22 double crochet running down the side of your dishcloth and I'll just pause here for a second and show you what this looks like so there's my first edge sort of the border starts running along the top we chain two we turn the corner and then we start working two double crochet into each row edge I'm working right around the stitch it's either a double crochet or a chain two I'm working right around the stitch I'm not bothering to split it or anything I am working two double crochet around each stitch at the edge of the row so I'll have 22 double crochet running down the side here Nico Nico the gifting ninja <laughs> thank you so much Nico Nico sneaking in with another gifted membership and Sally has won it. Welcome to the family, Sally. Congratulations. Two more double crochet around the edge of what was row one. And that will be 22 double crochet or two double crochet worked into each row edge all the way down the side it's a nice way to finish off these little samplers if you're not doing if you're not turning them into like a granny shell stitch crochet like a, a fair isle granny square like we did a video on um, this is another nice way to just sort of finish off your edges makes everything really neat and tidy chain two for the corner rotate we're working across the bottom now we're also going to have 20 stitches across the bottom we're going to work one into the each of the foundation chain rows or opposite each of those stitches all the way down so the first one is going to be right here at the bottom so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty we've just worked around stitch number twenty so make sure that you are getting into the chain the foundation chain at the bottom of that stitch that you just worked around so you don't want to miss that because you still want to have 20 <laughs> stitches running all the way across the bottom. Carrie, thank you so much for picking up a pattern in our shop. And then it's just one double crochet in the foundation chain. So basically right opposite each stitch from row one. And you'll have 20 all the way across. Boy, does it pop with that red border. Whoa. Yeah, red's amazing for that. It's, in, it's incredible. I think that's why red, white, and green are... I mean, I know, like, you've got white snow, green trees, and, and red berries. That's, I think, kind of where all those colors kind of come from. They look so good together. They look so, you know, bright and cheerful and, and striking out there in a winter landscape. Someone asked earlier about making a, um, like a kitchen tea towel versus a dishcloth. Mm -hmm. So... I would just think you would you could still use this pattern oh heck yeah and just maybe maybe join six together like just just kind of make it bigger or i would it just do it on, on the material right? i would you, do you'd it like use like a a cotton 
probably. Well, this is cotton. So oh, okay. you want to use the same cotton yarn. Um, if you want to have multiple repeats, you decide how wide you want your dishcloth to be. I'd say maybe two repeats would be nice because this will be about, what are we at here? Six Between six and six and a half inches wide for each repeat. So if you did two repeats, you'd be up to 12 or 13 inches. That's like 30 to 32 and a half centimeters wide. That's nice width for a tea towel. Um, so you would just cast on, or I should say chain uh, 41 and then start your first row, uh, double crochet in the third stitch. The chain two counts as a double crochet, double crochet all the way across, and then re work the row twice. So you're repeating each repeat of the, of the graph, each repeat, each row of the graph, you repeat twice. So 20, 20, and then like you would do 9A, 2B, 9A, repeat, 9A, 2B, 9A, repeat. So this is how we built our foundation or our Fair Isle style calendar blanket. I did six repeats in the blanket, but you can do two to make it like nice and wide for a, um, a, a tea towel. And then you can continue with the pattern. So you turn around at the end of row 11 and you would chain two, turn, and then start the whole graph all over again. So row one is all A, and then row two, repeat, row three, row four, row five, and you're basically just doing the same thing back and forth, and it would be all trees. Now, we've got so many graphs at this point. We have, if you're looking for Christmassy stuff, we've got the tree, we've got a Christmas stocking uh, graph pattern in our shop. We also have the year, 2023, if you wanted to um, make use of that. That's a free pattern over on our website. We also have a cross uh, graph over on our website. That's another free pattern. If you wanted to use that, that's Christmassy too. Um, and we also just have a ton of really um, cute uh, patterns. So if you are kind of looking for something that suits more your theme of your kitchen, um, then we've, we've got we've got oodles of them at this point uh, and you can do like a tree and then maybe the year you can do four different ones you can just have the same one repeating it's it's entirely up to you so yes you can absolutely make a tea towel and you can make this longer so for example I would do for a tea towel you want it to fold over um, and be kind of useful so I would do two graphs wide by three graphs tall that's how I would do it Chain two, once you've got your last or your 20th stitch worked into the edge of your uh, bottom. So just trying to count two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, It's 20. so um, like traditional looking. Yes. It's a very traditional classic. That's kind of why I picked it. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I do too. Uh, chain two for your corner and then remember you're skipping the edge of the last row you just did It's easy to see what you want is the next um, the, You're working into each row edge of the actual graph So my first two double crochet go around the edge of row one and then two around the edge of row two and so on It's going to mirror what you did on the other side. So two double crochet per row edge Country darling. Hello, hon. Thanks, Jada. I love this. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you can absolutely use this. I don't know if any of you um, are familiar with Cinnamon Stitches. I know a lot of you watch her. She made our blanket this year, too, and she finished the year with this tree pattern. So she used it for her 12th uh, uh, pattern stitch so if you want to see what that looks like we posted a picture of it in the community tab a while ago but you can also see her uh, blanket update video on her uh, channel she used all this really pretty twinkly sparkly yarn the whole year so her entire blanket has kind of sparkle running through it and I have to admit I'm a little envious <laughs> uh, we don't have access to that pretty kind of sparkly twinkly yarn here um, that she used so I kind of wish I did because I'd love to make a blanket that looks like that <laughs> Carrie! Oh my goodness, Carrie, thank you so much. Carrie has swooped in and gifted a membership, and it looks like Paula has won it. Welcome back, Paula. Congratulations. I'm working the last two double crochet of that border around the last row edge stitch. That would be row 11. Chain two, that gives you your, your little corner, and then you're gonna find the top of the chain three that you, or I should say the chain two that you began the whole border with. Slip stitch to join, 
And that is it. I'm going to snip my yarn, give myself a decent sized tail that I will now weave in back and forth. There we go. All right. And I will weave it in back here. So I'm going to bring it down first through the loop at the side of a stitch, and then I will weave it in underneath these double crochet stitches. So get my needle under here. Pull it, but not too tightly. I don't want to pull my corner out of alignment. And then I'm going to double back and work back through those same stitches. Does anybody have any questions about this little dishcloth or about the graphs or anything like that while well, I'm just weaving in my tail here? Well, hello, Sue. Sue has been a member for 51 months. Goodness gracious, thank you, Sue. Sue, with a membership milestone, Sue says, do you have an, an ornament, ornament pattern for Fair Isle style? I'm thinking circle shake with band in the middle. Oh, circle shape with a band in the middle. Maybe the year in the middle. Love you both. Oh, like a round one, a round ball. Um, I love that idea, Sue. No, we haven't done that. Um, what a wonderful idea. I wonder how I would do that in a circular format. Hmm, I'll have to give that some thought. I really like that idea. Lovely suggestion. So let's see here. Final sizing on today's dishcloth is 17 centimeters by 19 centimeters or almost, so six and three quarter inches by seven and a half inches. And if I blocked it out, I could probably get it to go square, uh, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. I kind of like that rectangular shape. So there we go. That was my sampler done in acrylic. This is the dishcloth version done in cotton, and I really like that. It looks good on either side. And now I've got a sort of thematic Christmassy themed dishcloth for use in the kitchen or honestly to give as a nice little gift and people generally like getting dishcloths because they work really well uh, but they're also kind of cute so this is something that I would whip up a couple of and put in the stash for gifting. Sue! Sakura Sue with a gifted membership. Thank you Sue. Sue someone swooping asked, in. Um, someone asked earlier about running um, the color running and we found that it depends on the yarn. It sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So we just wash them um, by themselves one or two times, and that yep. pretty much takes care of that. Yes. Uh, thank you, Sue, for gifting a membership. And it looks like Catherine has won it. Congratulations, Catherine, and welcome to the family. Thank you so much, Sue. I'm just pulling out my corners. I like to do this too. Um, this is sort of I grab the corner, I pinch it, I pull it out, and it really squares it up which really makes that border look like a little uh, frame. There we go. This is also a nice way to finish your samplers. So if you wanted something a little more solid, you didn't want to do the um, granny shell stitch version, which I'll show you in a second. Um, this is a really nice way to finish it too. It continues that double crochet solid kind of appeal and you can still treat it like a blanket square. You can join them all together like you would any other blanket squares, like a solid double crochet uh, granny square. So that's a nice way to finish it too. Of course, in cotton, it's gonna make a nice um, dishcloth. I'm gonna grab a couple of the other ones just to sort of show you what the other borders look like.
So another nice uh, version of this would probably be done in cotton would be the snowflake. So we just did the um, the granny square. This is how you turn your Fair Isle style uh, samplers into a granny square. So we, we did a live stream about this a while ago and we did a quick recap video. Um, I think we posted that a couple weeks ago now. And this snowflake image, another classic Fair Isle style image is the snowflake. This would also make a really pretty um, dishcloth. You could also do it um, using the granny shell stitch edging like this, or you could do what I did today and do the double crocheting edging like this. So that's an option for you too. Um, using the shell stitch, the way I've done it here, really squares it up because you wind up with seven shells across all four sides. So it evens it up. This one's um, based on the number of stitches in rows. So it's a little more rectangular, but this one really squares it up. And this way you can turn them into like square granny squares. But I also feel like this would make a really cute dishcloth as well. Uh, so two different ways you can finish off your squares. We've got the recap video showing you how to do the granny shell stitch to square it up. And then today, just working straight double crochets all the way around. So I uh, love both of these. Very nice wintry uh, theme. Some people like to decorate with snowflakes. And this is another one that kind of takes you right through the winter. So if you like to sort of change up the decor in your kitchen or something, um, then both of these are nice all the way through the winter, depending on the colors you choose. This one's very wintry. I like that blue and white kind of effect. Uh, so there's that. And then... Um, We've got a free pattern on the website. So if you wanted to add the date to your 2023 calendar blanket, we have a 2023 graph pattern available for free over on the pattern workshop page of our website. And this was the original live stream we did in which we turned the sampler into the actual granny square. So um, this little guy's recap video is based on this original live screen, uh, live stream. Um, but this is a graph. So if you wanted to include that date as sort of the last little date in your blanket or you wanted to kind of however you wanted, maybe wanted to include that in. I just like the fact that we were able to mark the year uh, with 2023. Now, this is not a mirror image graph. So if you are using a graph like this, which is not mirror image, you do want to pay attention to which side of the graph you are starting on when you do your color changing as you study that graph and work back and forth because we're chaining and turning the blanket or the sampler with every row. So that's why it matters in a graph that isn't mirror image. So that one's kind of neat. And then I think during that live stream, we also just kind of had some fun. Um, I bordered up a few more of my samplers. So that was, I turned one of my rabbits into a granny square. I like that little rabbit. Um, I turned my tulip into a granny square. So the tulip was the April Fair Isle style pattern. So we've got a tutorial for this. And this was my sampler in which I did it in two colors. So in the blanket, I just did it all one color. But um, I wanted to do a sampler to try it in two colors. And a lot of you uh, did your tulips all with green, the same green base, but then you changed up the tulip color. And I love how that looks. It is just so springy and happy. Um, so that's, this would also make a cute dishcloth, all done in cottons. This would make a really cute spring dishcloth or an Easter dishcloth. Um, tulips are just such a fun little, little image. And then um, I also turned one of our cottages. So the May, the May Fair Isle pattern was the, was the house. And I also kind of went a little crazy and I made a cottage version. Uh, which has like little window boxes and little little uh, flowers in the window boxes. And I turned that one into a granny square too. I will probably end up turning most of my samplers, my acrylic samplers into granny squares with these little borders, um, with the same border, the same color. And I will probably turn them into a blanket. Um, Cause my original thought at the beginning of the year was that I would make a little scarf. Well, I've got like 65 samplers and counting at this point. <laughs> so uh, I have way more than I would ever need for a scarf. I could make scarves for like, for the whole country at this point. Um, so I'm probably gonna turn them into, like I was thinking I'd like to make a story blanket where I've got like each little square, it kind of tells a little bit of a story. Um, so I kind of have that percolating in the back of my head. So as I think of it, I kind of grab a sampler and I grab my green yarn and I add my little border and um, that's what I've been doing. So these are all, these are just so, these are just so fun. We, I've have, had so a, much we fun. have a lot of people that are just learning or just starting out. 
do you have any um suggestions or yeah. tips for that absolutely um first of all we've got a um introduction to fair isle style tutorial it's the first video in the entire fair isle playlist and we'll make sure that playlist is linked below um, at the end of uh, today's live stream and it is the smallest simplest little version of some introduction to graph work and basically you're just sort of learning how to carry your colors how to work over like a reach just sort of some finer little techniques it's not difficult you're just double crocheting and when you are changing colors you're just remembering to finish off a double crochet stitch with the new color that you're changing to and if you have to carry a color you work over top of it um it can seem daunting at first you see something like this and you think oh my gosh like that's that's woven right in, you know, and if you're brand new to crochet, you might think, oh, I don't know, that just seems like a whole lot of work. It's not. It's really not. Reading a graph is is just like you're just reading first one direction, then the other, then the other, then the other. And just picture it like you're switching your blanket, you know, you're working back and forth like a little typewriter. Um, so that's not difficult. And changing colors, the whole point of the Fair Isle uh, graph work that we did this year was that we were really sticking close to the traditional concept of fair isle which is to really only carry one or two colors at a time max so i did every single one of my calendar blanket installments with just two colors a color a which was always white and a color b that changed depending on the month um, some of you uh, kim is one did her blanket all in red and white it's absolutely gorgeous a couple of you uh, kept to you know, just like repeating two or three colors and that's it. And some of you just went hog wild and made every every row and every A a different color, every B, you know, you really changed up the, the, the individual graphs. You know, some of you had sailboats for August that had different colored sails and stuff. Um, in every single video, we talk about options, things you could do with color. We show you how to use spools. Um, so I always say, do a sample. You don't have to do the whole blanket. You can even just make one little graph um, of each different blanket pattern we had this year. There'd be 12. You'd have 12 granny squares. That'd be really cute. Put together into a baby blanket, for example, um, or just a little sampler blanket to sort of hang on the wall. That would make a really pretty little wall hanging, especially if you finished each of your samplers with like the granny square edging or just the straight double crochet edging and join them all together. Um, you could join them into a scarf. You could just make two. Um, like for example, if you took two of your finished samplers, like my rabbit here and my tulip, and then put them that wrong sides together and stitched all the way around three sides, that would make a really adorable gift bag. Um, and then of course you could just run a ribbon through the spaces across the top to cinch it together. So that would be an adorable little bag or a little purse there's so many things you can do with granny squares and so if you treat your samplers the same way you've just basically ex super expanded your granny square uh, options i hope that kind of answers that question <laughs> someone asked earlier if, if you could do a um tea towel oh boy i forgot what it was called now because they were aware of the tea towel holder mm -hmm. but this was something different can you repeat that in the chat something um, to do with the tea towel let me holder? see if i can find it a topper a tea towel topper oh do you know what that is yeah it's like something that you um like there's two ways to do it you can literally stitch directly onto a tea towel and that is like it that's what hooks over the oven door and it's like um a ton of actually attached to the tea towel and the tea towel kind of hangs below it and you can sort of grab it and dry your hands and whatnot um or you can kind of create them to be like separate so that the tea towel still kind of hangs underneath it but then there's just some sort of cute top over top our tea towel hanger or our tea towel little holder is like a really simplified version of that um so it's a nice one to start with if you've never kind of gone into that before and then of course it makes it so that you can take the tea towel you can wash it you can also like keep switch out the tea towels you don't have to have it attached to the tea towel so uh yeah tea towel toppers are like 
either stitched directly onto the tea towel or they're just separate but they're kind of a little more decorative so um we haven't made anything that decorative but uh, i do like that idea those are really cute Okay, everybody, um, I'm going to call today's live crochet along there. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, this was a third in a row. We did um, some card tuck-ins on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, did the little dishcloth here for Wednesday. We're going to take tomorrow off. We're, we are finishing up the Fair Isle style calendar blanket this week. So we want to make sure that we've got the border video uh, ready to go for you on Friday. I know a lot of you were asking. Um, we do try to get it out as quick as we can usually. Um, and it's it's uh, just basically finding the time to get it all done. So we want to make sure it is ready to go on Friday. So we will be working on that tomorrow. So we won't see you live tomorrow, but we will see you Friday for the summation, the border video for our Fair Isle style calendar blanket. And um, I'm pretty... I'm pretty excited about it, but I'm also sort of sad that the blanket's coming to an end because I've enjoyed this graph work so much. Um, but uh, that will be Friday. So we will see you Friday. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the gifted memberships and the membership milestones and the super chats and for popping into the shop and picking up a couple of patterns. Don't forget, we have some free Fair Isle style patterns uh, and graphs available on our website too. And if you're a Silk or Vicuña family member, uh, be sure to pop into the members only page. We'll repost that login information for the Silk and Vicuña members later today. Uh, pop in there and get um, the members only versions of some of our Fair Isle patterns. We've done some special ones for the members too. Uh, so this is really fun to experiment with. It's not intimidating. Uh, it's not hard. Just take your time. Just pay attention. And once you get sort of into the swing of it, you won't have to focus quite so much on it. And um, you can turn your samplers into a whole bunch of things. You can make them into just blanket squares or dishcloths. So uh, lots of lots of opportunities uh, to play with double crochet graphs. All right, everybody, um, take care. Stay safe, Mr. and Stitches. Do you have anything you want to add? Um, I think I want to add, there were some people that were asking about certain specific tutorials and patterns. So just a quick recap, um, in regards to things like calendar blankets, um, if you're interested in following up on an older one, like for example, someone was asking about the folk art calendar blanket. Um, you just have to search for it on YouTube. If you want to watch the videos um, on YouTube, you can search Jada and Stitches Folk Art Calendar Blanket. If you're looking for written patterns, you can uh, look out look at our ebooks, which are on the Etsy shop. Mm -hmm. When you go to the Etsy shop homepage, I believe it's down the right, uh, sorry, the left side. Yes, on there's the all of the categories. And is that is it under ebooks or is it under calendar blankets? It's under ebooks. It's under ebooks, yeah. and that's where you'll see all of the calendar blankets that we have written patterns for. Mm -hmm. And they're also on our website. If you go to our website and you go to calendar blankets and you scroll down, you'll see all of the projects on there. That's the probably the quickest way to look through it. Yeah, because they're all curated in one place. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. um, that's all I can think of. Marvelous. Well, great. Thanks, everybody. Um, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you Friday. Cheers. Bye, guys. <laughs>